Hey everybody, Big J, Anderson Mountain View Farms. We're glad to see y'all again. Got Lil the camera, say hey. Hi. Got TB here with me. Hey. TB, what are we talking about today? Well, Big J is going to be talking about math. No! If you ever wondered how Chef got the big hair, it's because when we talk about math, okay? Now, there's another word that really makes it big too, and we're gonna get to that here in a minute. But now, it's okay. Math, I've heard it all. I don't like math, I'm not good with numbers, I hate numbers, uh, I'm just not into that, I, all of that stuff, right? I've heard it all. However, it's kind of a shame because math is a major foundation for what I would say building an analytical mind. I mean, who doesn't want an analytical mind? I've never met anybody that says, I don't want an analytical mind, right? But everyone wants that, especially for their child, so that they can aspire. A lot of people have dreams and goals. And a lot of those big career fields people are looking into usually require some level of an analytical mind. Some are higher computation in math than others, but still building an analytical mind. And math does that. And it builds an analytical mind to do what? To help us for personal stewardship and professional success. Personal stewardship being our day-to-day -day budgeting, how we manage our personal resources, our time, all of that stuff, right? And then professional success, what we do to earn a living. Whether that be working for somebody else, uh, working for ourselves, running a homestead, or some combination of those. So, that's what we want. We want to build an analytical mind for personal stewardship and professional success. And math is the big foundation for that. Now, what I've observed over the years, different students that I've interacted with, is that there are five major obstacles that cause people to either never fully develop an analytical mind or hit a major stall out, and we're going to get to each one of those five here in a minute. Uh, but what I also want to talk about is why it's so critical. A lot of your major fields, whether they be consumer math, trade math, engineering, physics, chemistry, all that kind of thing, there is that foundation in math. And if you don't get that, a lot of people struggle. They end up doing something that, that they don't want to do because they never got a level of that. For example, my grandfather uh, didn't have a very high literacy. Now, I do think that that's critical, and that did hold him back in areas, but he had a very good analytical mind, very good with math, numbers. He was, he was a carpenter, ran a homestead, and he was very efficient at that, and he did uh, a great job with it. Um, and so I've never met anybody that had an, an analytical mind that was really built up, that was unemployed, or could not find work. Now, if times happen, economy crashes, and there's all of that stuff, or major tragic accidents physically, or maybe somebody did something unethical. But generally speaking, those that I've seen that struggle, whether it comes to professional success and just trying to get into something that really makes it, earns a good living, or those that had trouble budgeting, and, and these people are oftentimes in a lot of debt, they don't understand how to manage their money, it really, things really start to get chaotic in their life when it comes to their finance because they never really built that analytical mind to get that personal stewardship. And of course, math being the fundamental of that. Now, there's also the, there was an old uh, kind of adage or saying, if you will, that, I would, that would, would be said or implied. And that was, hey, boy, you know, keep on your books so that way you can get off the farm. Now, I will say on that, I think that math and building an analytical mind oftentimes is built on a homestead and is, will really help you uh, develop an analytical mind so that you can run your homestead more efficiently or your own business or whatever it was. Uh, I was blessed to be able to be raised on a farm. Both my parents have very much of an analytical mind. My brother has a gifted analytical mind. And so I was kind of born into that and raised into that type of thinking, and I've been blessed ever since. Uh, now there are, when it comes to math, there are workhorses and there are racehorses. Um, racehorse is somebody that's just naturally gifted. It comes to them easily. It comes to them quickly. My brother was, uh, was like that. Me, for ex on the other hand, I'm more of a workhorse. I had to really work at it, work hard at it, uh, crunch through the numbers, do a lot of examples, a lot of work. And that's the thing about math. There is no easy one, two, three. 
to really grasp math, uh, just like a, a, a foreign language, you have to work at it. You have to practice at it. To really inculcate it, you have to do a lot of problems. You have to get through it. Everybody has to do that to some extent, some more than others. I had to work at it. I mean, I fooled a lot of people. They thought I was natural at it, but I really wasn't. I just put in a lot of time and effort. And so if I can get through this and I can get to this point um, where I've had a lot of success in two major fields, one in space command with satellites, and the other was crime scene investigation and everything that goes into the field of forensics. And analytical mind is what kind of paved that road for me. Now, there are five major obstacles that I'm just going to list in this episode. We're going to get into them a little bit more detail in the next episode. But the five obstacles um, that I would say that you've got to get past, and pre-algebra, it's kind of that hinge, if you will. Um, a lot kind of culminates in that from, like, say, seventh grade. Uh, pre-algebra, eighth grade, and then springboards up into higher level math, engineering, um, physics, other kinds of mechanics, that type of thing. So what happens here is first the problem solving. That's a big, that's a biggie for a lot of people. They just can't seem to get past that. They, they, they just give up. They see words, they panic. The second thing uh, would be fractions. No! Yes, that shift. Again, Big hair, it just got really big because we said the magic word fractions. Now, that's okay. Now, because we are going to work through that and overcome that, especially least common denominator, what everybody's really paranoid of, again, least common denominator. Now, the third thing um, we, I would say is graphing, especially quadrant one. Uh, those are all positive numbers. Generally, sometimes you do have negative slopes in there, but in quadrant one, a lot of things that you see, statistics that you evaluate, that you work through, a lot of those are in quadrant one. So you really want to be able to master the graph. The fourth thing I would say is negative numbers. Negative numbers are not easy. They're, they're not intuitive to us. Um, the only thing that we really think of, I would say, generally in negative numbers, and that's temperature, the thermometer, things go below zero. You can kind of grasp that. We've kind of been trained for that. But negative numbers is something that you have to really be able to get past to, to master, um, especially when it comes to the graph and higher uh, algebra, that kind of thing. And the fifth thing, and this is kind of a pair, if you will, and that's roots and exponents. We think of exponents like squared or cubed, and they, of course, go up a lot higher than that. And then, of course, roots being square root, cube root. Now, those are really fundamental uh, to grasp those. And because when you get into volume and area, for example, when you get into square cube, Q root, square root, depending on which way you're going up and down the ladder. So each one of those five things are critical, I think. And if you don't master those, you really get a good handle on those. When you introduce a much more involved concept, you're going to get lost and you're going to have a hard time. You're going to struggle. You're going to give up. You're going to end up doing something that you really don't like. Now, I, I also offer tutoring in math, especially this particular area that I'm the most passionate about. I feel like if people can get a good grasp on that, then some of the other textbooks and material that, that's available out there, there's wonderful material out there, different subjects, um, that you get more out of that material. If you can just get past this and, and really go with it. Um, so I do offer that. You, you can check it out, andersonmountainviewfarms.com. That's where I have uh, some of the material if you want to reach out, contact me. If you use me or not, I really encourage you to take this to heart. In our uh, next episode, um, we're going to lay out the big five. A um, little bit more detail, why they're important, what they are. So again, andersonmountainviewfarms.com. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.